to A to Z. I'm going to talk with Mr. David McMillan. And today we have a special show for you. But first, I would like to mention some of our great sponsors. Today's show is being sponsored by Prem Automotive. That's my good friend, Mr. Mike Ramsey, located here at 801 East Trinity Lane in Nashville, Tennessee. His phone number is 615-228-4478. Another sponsor we have today is No Job Too Big, Too Small. Call Mr. Elboy. Better known as Will A.L. is my good friend. Give him a call at 615-972-0126. He's located here at 1211 Bridge Church Pike. Once again, we are being happy to say we're sponsored by Computer House. Computer House with all your computer needs. Just give them a call. Their phone number is 615-891-2082. And our real special sponsor for the name is Half the Sky. That's Lucretia LeBon. Her phone number is 615-891-2082. Four eight four seven seven eight one, and I'd like to say to you, good morning, Mr. McNeil. Good morning, good morning, buddy. Good morning, Nashville and surrounding areas. Buddy Blue. Yeah. And once before we start the show, I'd like to say if you would like to participate in this special show, it can easily be done by calling 760 The Gospel at 615-242-7760. Call in, let us know what you're thinking, and that number is 615-242-7760. Yes, yeah. yeah, uh... We have a great set today. I'd like to say I'm I'm your host, David, and my co-host, Mr. Buddy Blues. Blues. And our subject today is sort of, uh, it's dealing with cars and it's dealing with our uh, personal people, people of the city. We're going to say drive to stay alive. So I, what I'm saying, what I mean by that, occasionally we need to pre-trip our cars, make sure everything's working properly because we don't want to be interrupted in our daily routine by a traffic stop or something that could be avoided. On that dreaded flat tire. Um, yeah, I mean, pre-trip it, you know, check your taillights. I tell you, a lot of things people don't ever check on their car, and, it's, and you never think about it, I never think about it, is that tag light. You know, the tag light on the back of your car. You know, that, that's I got stuff for that. Because there are actually two lights above your license plate on the rear of the car. If it's in the front, it's usually they'll let that one be dark because your headlights will get that one. But there is a law that your rear plate must be illuminated after dark. After dark, right. I had stopped for that, and I never knew, never thought about it. Now, some cars don't even have a light. I mean, I've seen them not have a light back there. Anyway, uh, Try to check that most of the time. Check the tag light. Check your tail lights. I have someone to, to see if your brake lights work. Cause we don't want to stop. You know, uh, for, uh, what you call a traffic stop. And man, a traffic stop can be deadly sometimes. If you don't, yes, if you, sir. Uh, if you know, if you just stop that just the right brings person. up what I call probable cause of why you want to deflate my pocket. Yeah, you know, I want you to watch our speed limit. You want you want to watch the speed limit. You want to board. And if you do get stopped. Uh, by an officer or someone of, uh, of the law, you want to conduct yourself properly. You don't want them to have excess movement in the car, looking back, going on the seat, going in the glove compartment, doing suspicious stuff when you get stopped by the by, by an officer or whatever. Because I want to, like I say, you want to drive to stay alive. Don't well, I agree with you, Mr. McMillan. It's your first chance to make a great impression on someone you definitely will be meeting again. Yeah. First impression. No, I have a second chance to make a first impression. Yes, you know, yes sir. So we're we going to make a first impression. We're going to make and uh, another thing, like I said, keep your hands visible. Keep your everything. Keep your hands visible. And try to keep eye contact with the person. You know, don't be, you know, just, if you don't have anything to say, don't say anything. You know, but like I said, and a lot of people always want to ask why was I stopped. I would just let him tell me why I was stopped. I, I agree. Him. I would wait on that. Well, wait, they said, why are you stopping me? I'm more concerned with can I leave now. <laughs> <laughs> right. And uh, if he had a reason to stop, he should stay the reason to stop. They, they usually do, but that's later on. <laughs> right. And if you're in violation, just take the citation and go on. But, uh, like all, said, the, all the warnings. Right. All the warnings. Well, a lot of times they give you a warning. Say so you hit tail light was out or you or your brake light wasn't working properly or whatever. But anyway, but I would never, I, would, I, I, would, I never, I try not to ever give an officer uh, uh, to search, you know, the, 
be able to search my vehicle if he wanted to search the vehicle. He might ask to search you. He always just say no. You know, he said, no, you can't do that. Then he might threaten to say, I'm going to bring the dogs in and all that stuff. You still have to have a, a proper search warrant to search the vehicle. Just say no if you don't. If we don't. If you don't have anything to hide, which I don't think I have anything to hide, but I still don't want to search my car, but once they start searching, you start tearing up stuff in your car, going to your door panels. That's true, there are different levels of a search. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they'll go off on a search, you know. He might smell something in your car that, that, that you know, give him, trigger something in his head and make him want to tear your car up. I've you know, seen it happen, you know. I can hear him, I know it's there, I know that smell. <laughs> <laughs> He might smell some coffee or something that you had left over in the car or whatever. He might have smelt the memory from his distant past, but, but he must have He must have. He but must have I, your permission. Right, have your permission to search. To be honest, it's best to be quiet and just call your mama, call your mama. Yeah, call, be ask for one be phone polite. call. Be, yeah. be quiet, be polite, and tell the truth, yeah. it's my mama's car. I, I don't yeah, know. I don't know. Whatever you find in the car, don't belong to me. Got my Everybody car. drives this car. <laughs> well, anyway, they but just say, if he has to search your car, you can always say no. And he, if he actually you remove yourself from the car, that might, he might be threatening you saying he wants to search your car, but you can still say no, you know, in that way. Just get out of the car and he will ask you to walk back to his car, walk back to his car, whatever. But um, always keep your hands visible. Don't have your hands uh, in your pocket, uh, in your coat pocket, or behind your back, or whatever. Just keep your hands visible. That way you have no, no reason to... He and, had, and, he, uh, and this is Buddy Boo's personal recommendation. Stay home. Yeah, to stay trust, home. Trust. You don't have to be out there. But stay home. Stay right. Home. I'm, I'm, we talking about driving still alive. You know, that's what yeah. I'm saying. And, and that is the choice you can make is to stay home. To stay at home, too. But yeah. And they have a reason to stay home because this virus is out here, you know. But like I said, if anyone have a comment or complaint about what we're talking about today, give them somebody to call in, buddy. You can join in to the show by simply dialing 760 AM, the gospel. That phone number is 615 242 7760. Call in and let us know what you're thinking. And we want you to be prepared for this holiday weekend, which actually probably started in someone's mind Wednesday, and probably won't end until Monday or Tuesday morning. So just be safe. And if you don't have to go anywhere, don't. Well, I try to stay stay close. It's, uh, I think they say they recommend it if you have a, a home gathering, not over 10 people should be there. And, you know, just, just stay in immediate family should be together, not have no large congregation uh, in the whatever you're doing. No well, large welcome, barbecue. Welcome to the new norm. You know who you're around and keep track of everyone. And even right. the party's over with, make sure everyone makes it home safely. Like we always do, and make sure they help to them good care. Yeah, keep your, like I said, keep your distance. That's what I ask the people to do. Keep the distance, and I can stay my distance. And I try to wear a mask when I'm in a crowd, when I'm, when I'm going to a store or whatever. Yes, yeah, sir. Uh, we want to, I don't know if they have a, a stringent law on wearing a mask, but I think it's, it's a state by state, state city by, by city, yeah. wherever I'm better do it. But it's basically up to you and your safety. Right. If state. you feel safer with a mask, put it on. Like I I, got, I keep my mask with me in all the time. So, okay. so uh, like we want to, even though we we traveling, a lot of people travel. Had to, we got essential workers here. A lot of essential workers that has to go to work have to stop and buy gas and have to just purchase. Out. You got people driving trucks. They reach out there. I think they're essential. You got people uh, working in the hospital. And, pe and people such as yourself, Miss McMillan, you have to get out and service customers. Right, I'm a essential worker. I work on cars and stuff sometimes. I have people and, calling and, me. And you're a reporter. <laughs> <laughs> we try to report on the right thing. Like I said, I want to keep everybody uh, stay intact. You know, if you're traveling, call somebody while you're traveling. Call somebody and talk to someone. Because sometimes that, keep, that wakes me up. If I'm traveling, especially if I'm getting stopped by an office somewhere, I call somebody, so I get stopped by someone who's on, so, and I'm here now, we can write me a ticket, or yes, I was speeding, whatever. You try to keep yourself calm and stay in a normal position. You know, don't you don't jump out of the car and run back to the officer's car. <laughs> See, that could be a dangerous situation here. You stay in your car. Stay there until he asks you to get out, or asks you to, for your services, driver license, your passport, whatever kind of identification you have, 
Yeah, I try to keep passport and driver license. And at that time. moment, it comes to my mind, you know, I could have stayed home. Well, some people can't stay home. And, like and, the and babysitter. And, and you're, right, home. you're exactly true. So, like a truck driver, he must, he works on um, the road. A road driver, you got road people that works on the road. And, like you and, said, essential and, people, like essential. hospital, truckers. And, uh, a lot of, you know, police officers, they got to be, you know, they're out here. Well, that's true. It's, it's holiday weekend. Holiday that's weekend. part of their job. And they might appear to be lax at some time. They might appear to be sitting in the car asleep or whatever. But you still have to respect the officer. If that's his job. So that's why I feel like it. But like you said, drive, stay, and laugh. And we're going to shift gears here. I want to talk about keeping my car alive, too. And, uh, you, you know, things we do, the main thing is maintenance. We keep, we talk about maintenance. It, you know, the main thing about it, I was thinking about my daughter. She said she runs there more, and I, I wish I could do that. <laughs> right. I understand. I used to run there more. I kind of wobble in the kitchen and right. my knife and fork. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, sometimes it keeps you younger if you run there more. I mean, you, and I don't see how far you run. She's, one day she said she's running, it was uphill both ways. I, was, I said, I think she <laughs> went the wrong way. <laughs> that takes two talent. <laughs> two talent. They run uphill both ways. But anyway, if anyone want to call in, tell them how to call in. If you'd like to participate in today's show, it can simply be, be done by dialing 760 AM because, well, that's right, we know that phone number is 615 242 7760. If somebody might have had experience with, uh, with an officer, I mean, stop by an officer and had a, a good experience or a bad experience. I've, I've had quite a few experiences with police officers, but I, I've pat myself on the back, so I survived. I can say the same thing. I've had experiences, and I'm glad to say I've survived them. Guess what? I got a great story, but what? I'm still here. Still here. By the grace. <laughs> okay. Okay, maintenance for your car. Maintenance. When we think about maintenance, we're talking about observations. And we, first, you have to observe a problem before you need to design to design the problem. And maintenance is one of the things we'd like to check. And uh, like I said, pre-trip your car. Pre-tripping is something like simply as looking at your tires. Make sure they're not worn to the wear body. Most tires have what they call a wear bar on the tires, when the yes, treads, yeah. in the treads, and they, when you wear down to that position on the tire, it's time to replace the tire because it has some I think it has like a reserved rubber in the tire, they call it a wear pattern, a wear bar. So check the tires for that. And uh, tires have a wear problem, not a wear problem, but a wear pattern. Now sometimes your pattern on your tires can tell you uh, that you have a problem with your car or not. If you have a uh, few tires are uninflated, they normally wear more on the outer edge of the tire. That is so true, and people have tires that are overinflated and usually balder in the center. center. In the center of the tire. Or if your tires are wearing on one side, like on the inside of the tire, you might have a problem with your front end alignment. That is true. Now, if you're wearing it outside, you probably have too much toe in. Or some, it's the wear pattern on your tires can tell you a story about your vehicle. And it, and it, and it will tell you that your vehicle probably need a front end alignment or your air is improper air, or your brakes are bad. Now, if you have, say if your brakes are not stopping properly, if you have an unequal brake pattern where you one tire is grabbing and the other tire is relaxed, you may have, may have more wear on that side than the regular side of your tire to wear, so out, wear out. I've seen that happen. I've had a car with one wheel brakes. <laughs> I got one from the past. <laughs> you, this is one of those buddy blue statements from my really past, and I like to take this time to say that none of these opinions I'm expressing reflects anyone else's opinion but mine. This is purely for entertainment purposes. Now that I got that out the way, remember when we had these little cattails that came out the front of your car when you had the big two ones of white wheel on your tire? Yeah. And you had these little cattails that popped out, and you could tell when you bumped the curb so you wouldn't dirty up your uh, two inch white wall. Right. And it looked like little catfish things sticking out in front of your tires. And we had that little piece of leather in the back to contact to the road because we still had AM radio back then. Right, keep the static at the radio. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. A lot of those things had to do with prepping your car. 
Meaning, before you left, you put on certain clothes and everything. You did the same thing for your car. You make sure your car was clean. You make sure your tires were all pressured up and you make sure you were ready to go. And you had a great time. And usually it ended with us going to the driving. Right, but <laughs> Another it, event with our cars. Right. Well, I, I know what you're speaking of, the yes, thing right. just to hang out on the side and the cattail thing. Yes, to let you know if you were going to touch right. your two-inch white world to the curb. But a lot of times they had them on both sides, and I couldn't yes, figure sir. out why you, got to. you can't park on the left side of the street. But they had them for looks. There you go. Yeah. And they didn't have, but well, the cars, in the early days, the American cars just only had one mirror. They just had a mirror on the driver's side. That is true. No mirror on the passenger side. And also one brake light on that same side. One like brake light. Yeah, one brake light. But, like, I don't think it's a law now you'd have two brake lights. Right. But I got to admit, there were not very many cars well, <laughs> at the time. The interstate wasn't so prevalent at That's the time, true. and right you right. didn't need the mirror on the right because one thing was on the right side of the road was a big old ditch. So you didn't or a cliff. <laughs> you, you're so right. You didn't want to look back on that side. Anyway, so uh, now we have to have mirrors on both sides of the car. They got an inside rear view mirror. Although yeah. there is a law, because remember one of my cars I'm going to put a panel right a mirror in. Even though I'm going to put in a panoramic mirror, that's a mirror that's inside the car, I am still legally bound by the state of Tennessee to have two mirrors on the, on the side. On that side. Even if I have a third one in the center, I've got yeah. to have it. These laws vary from state to state, but in the state of Tennessee, you must have a, let's say, one a mirror on the driver's side and the passenger side. Yeah. But that's up to the law officer's discretion if you can see visibly. Well, I think it's necessary to have a mirror on the, back on the passenger side because that mirror, now it's show, it doesn't show the actual reflection of what's there. It says things are closer the than... The this mirror may appear to be closer than you may think. Yeah. Right. It's, That's yeah, a favorite GM sticker. Yeah, because that mirror, it lets you see a wider range yes, on that sir. side of your it's vehicle. In concave or yeah. convex or call a fish eye. Yeah, whatever call it. But anyway... That's that's one of the thing. That's that man. We're gonna move on to the main. We're talking about how the car is doing everything. We talked about the tires, and observe the uh, the brakes. You, some knife cars got these uh, mag wheels. I don't call them mag spokes or what you call them. Custom wheels. wheels. Wheels, and you can see some people paint their brake uh, Cali calipers. I can certain. I can explain what that's about. It's really not a big thing on color. When you get a part from the parts store, it's usually what it is. If you paint it, it keeps it from rusting. Now, you could have painted it any color. Most people prefer to paint it red because it sticks out and, and it makes it look a little cooler. But the purpose is to paint that brake caliber is what it actually is so it doesn't rust. You can paint it any color. I've seen them yellow. I've seen them red. But if you don't paint it, eventually rust will build up on it. And you can, and it, once it's rust, that's another story. So yeah. the painting, I've seen red and yellow. Right, I've seen my uh, color. But another thing I'd like to mention too. It's a rust proof thing. I'm trying, not trying to uh, uh, scare bash anyone, but if you got those kind of brake calipers for your car, you might need to put a safety bleed screw on there because <laughs> somebody can come to your car and crack that screw if you can reach to that. Okay, to wheel. You, you've made a point of so, what I like to call bad intentions. Right, but let me see. If woulda, coulda, been a shoulda. But anyway, you don't want to be sabotaged. Well, we're, we're going to stay on the positive, but that's what your visual inspection is right. for. Right. And if you have these type of info, you can see your calibers and your caliber screw. Great blessing to you because you can visually inspect them when most people have to remove the rim. Right. If you're going to have to remove the rim, you can look in there and see how thick your brake pads are. Or how thick the dust is. And I like to keep the brake pads at least, uh, when you get down to see it by eighth of an inch, it's probably pretty thin. So you need to replace them. And I like to say, if you have those type of wheels on your car, you might want to safety check your bleed screws on your calipers. Because they that could is be, true. And they could be tampered with. But anyway, And that's, more than tampering, sometimes it's a machine. Things get loose. Yeah, and things get loose. And check the brakes. And you want to check your suspension, which I call the chocks or your struts, things of this nature. Because you can check for oil. You see a little oil leak or something on your scrubs, so you know they're leaking in. It's they're a going sign bad. of things to come. They're a sign of something's going bad with your brakes and scrubs and shops. Yes, sir. And uh, we always check the treads on the tires. I think the front 
shocks and the front brakes and stuff are quite easier to check than the rear. On the rear, most of that they can remove the wheel, remove the tires, and try to have your tires in working condition. Don't just wait till you're ready to go out of town and say, I'm gonna buy some new tires, I'm going out of town. You don't have to wait till you go out of town to buy some new tires. You can buy, keep your tires up to date. A car looks better with good tires on it. Well, it's, Mr. McMillan, yeah. if you don't mind, I'd like to add one of mine for visual inspection. Yeah. It is called your radiator or your condenser fan. Basically, when you're looking straight through the front of a car, if you can see through the car, you see a radiator. There's also a thing called a condenser that works with your air conditioning. But basically, we're talking about airflow. Right. You like, want, you want, you want, you want, yeah, I, like, I mean, I was not going to say airflow. You can, when you go to the car wash or whatever, wash that grill out. Wash that radiator out. That's the word, grill. <laughs> Got a lot of time bugs get in there and stop it at your airflow and then keep your air conditioning working properly. Your air works better when it's clean. Why is this car overheating? Because the fan won't turn because there was a bug stuck in the grill. Not that kitty cat that was in there holding on one day. No, yeah, no, yeah. But always visually inspect your radiator and I guess that's the word, the grill. Look in your grill and see if you can visibly see through it to a certain degree. Right. And there's not a piece of paper, a piece of plastic or bugs clogging it up. Right. It helps and you breathe. That's the underhood check. A lot of things I like to check on the hood too is the oil. The yes, oil sir. is the major thing. That's the life. That's keeping your car going properly. That's your blood. That's the bloodline of a car. You want to check that oil. Make sure you wipe the stick all the way up because sometimes oxidation can get on your oil stick in the sign of water and get in your engine mm -hmm. and get inside there. If your oil stick is rusty, if it got rust on it, it's, it's a sign of a problem with your engine. It's a sign of so water is getting in your oil some kind of way. And you want to make check your oil level. And check for, like I said, check for discoloration. If you got, if it's orange or white or milky, that could be a problem. So I've seen cars run well like that, and then they change the oil. And then it's not a problem. Not a problem, you know. So it's a lot of time. And you want to check power steering fluid. Yes, sir. Because if you let your vehicle run low on power steering fluid, it could damage the power steering pump. But we got to find out where the fluid is going. It's not digesting it. It's not regurgitating it. We got to find out why it's low. When and it's that is a dangerous situation because most people don't know when you're dealing with power steering, there is a high pressure side and a low pressure side. And that pressure is so high that it could actually become flammable if it touches a hot surface when it's squirts. Man, it's squirts. Like brake, brake fluid when you hit the exhaust. You can get an instant fire. Well, next thing you want to check the brake fluid too. That is true. See if it's low. Now, if your brake fluid is low, it could be low because your pads are worn or your shoes are worn. And then there's more than And just, it could be a leak. And there's more than just being low, excuse me, Mr. McMillan. It's the color of your brake fluid. I always compare it to apple juice. Well, you know, you want it, you, know, you don't want it just black, black, because if it's super black, that's an indication that your neoprene hoses is deteriorate. The rubber, we call them rubber hose, but they're really, it's a tough neoprene and type hose. And then there's that big V where called viscosity as to where you have brake fluid, but it's not working anymore because it's wore out. It's brown, it's brown up. Well, it won't circulate as fast through your hydraulic system because you call them hydraulic brakes. You want, to, and it's, it's a damage to your hydraulic system and your brake system and your brakes because you got a cylinder, the caliper and all these things work with new But you can say, Mr. McMillan, these are things that a DUI person or do it to some person can do themselves with a visual instruction. Well, you can, you can, uh, you can notice bleed it out. You can bleed your brakes or bleed the old fluid out and put new fluid in it if you like to do that. But one of the first steps is noticing you have a problem with the visual inspection. I'm right, right. You know, it's, then you'll figure out what to do, and that's really take it to a professional if you're not that gearhead type of person. <laughs> yeah, I like that word, gearhead. Well, I, I we know gearhead. who we are. Yeah, and if, you, if you don't, I love those ladies with those great fingernails because they're not going to get their hands dirty, but they know how to take care of their car. They know exactly where to take their car. And one of the people that I know that works on these type of cars is my good friend, Mr. Attaboy, Mr. Will A. Ellis. Mr. Attaboy is located here at 1211B Bertrade Pike, Nashville, Tennessee. I'd like for you to give him a call. His phone number is 615-972-0126. Another guy is Mr. Mike Ramsey at Prairie Automotive. Prairie Automotive is located here in Nashville, Tennessee, 801 East Trinity Lane. His phone number is 615-228-4478. And Mr. 
Macmillan, I would like for you to say something about Laquila LeBond at Half the Sky. Her phone number here in Nashville, and she's a feature sponsor for today. Her phone number is 615-484-7781. Say a good words about Miss LeBond. Well, she and, has and she has a uh, what we call a capability statement. Yes, a capability sir. statement it covers the parts that she can uh, order for you, special order parts, hard to find parts. And we, she's a part family, and you can reach her. She has a uh, email address. It's at www.hatchesky.com, and she uh, is located here in Nashville, Tennessee. She operates out of Nashville, and she has all yes, this also. In, she's in, got a. Let me let me give it a shot. If you would like to get in touch with Half the Sky, that's a crystal bond. She has her one of her locations that. 41 Peabody Street here in Nashville, Tennessee. That's a 372 zip. And her phone number is 615-484-7781. And you can also get in here and good connection with the Mr. And Mr. Dave and McMillan. His phone number is 615-474-3039. And I would like to make a nice little conversational plea to everyone that you too could be a part of Esco. You too can be a part of Auto Rescue. What is Auto Rescue? Auto Rescue is a community project sponsored by Mr. David McNellis. For your information, please call 615-474-3039. And basically, if there's a vehicle or something on your property that you want removed at no cost, you give Mr. McMillan a call. You two will get together and decide the best course of action. And nine times out of ten, those vehicles are recycled in ways that help the community. But we're going to go back to our feature sponsor, and that is Half the Sky. And once again, she's our feature sponsor for today, and her phone number is 615-484-7781. And we have plenty of time. Mr. McMillan, go ahead and let's hear your statement for the great day of the 4th of July. Well, as folks, we, we, can we do anything more on the, on the fluid, on the, uh, on the cars? We don't know how much time we got to have. Oh, we got two minutes. Okay, I wanted to talk about the washer fluid, too. That's one thing we need to mention, the washer fluid and discoloration. And do a blanket shake of the car. Blanket, we call it a blanket shake. That's everything. That's all over the car. We do a blanket shake, shake of the car. And, uh, hold on. I want to say something that uh, the inspiration for today said, I don't like to let my dedication derive from desperation. I mean, if you're dedicated to something, you like what you do, don't be desperate, desperate to do something else. So don't let your dedication derive from desperation. When you get out of bed in the morning, don't be out to be pushed out of bed. Just get out of bed and have something you want to do. Like we said, rise and grind. That's what we like to do every day. And I also like to say, when we know better, we always do better. Here in Nashville, Tennessee, and the surrounding area, you've been listening to A to Z Auto Talk. My name is David, my co-host, Mr. Buddy Blues. Buddy on, Blues. On the 760 AM, The Gospel. I would like to say, Happy New, Happy 4th of July. Well, it's Thanksgiving, it's a new year, because it's, it's Christmas well, in July. It's the first day of the new physical year, and it's Christmas by, in July. By, by so, uh, so, Happy New Year, and Happy 4th of July. Thanks for listening. Good day.